can't think of a better way to deter people from watching a video than starting it with a list of trig identities. I mean, I could count on one hand the number of people who would even watch such a video. Nonetheless, I'm choosing to start this video with this chart. So you know what you're getting yourself into. This video is going to unravel the mysterious origin of where these identities come from. So we'll start with this one. The easiest way to demonstrate where this identity comes from is using a graph. While playing around with the graphs of sine and cosine, that's a thing people do. There's a few observations we can make. Now you've learned that sine starts at 0, 0, and cosine starts at 0, 1. We know that sine reaches its maximum value of 1 at pi over 2, where cosine has its max at 0, 1, or pi over 2 units to the left of sine's max. So if I phase shift the graph of sine to the left by pi over 2, I should produce the graph of cos. We can summarize this observation using this identity. Let's do another. Looking at cosine, it's clear that it crosses through the x-axis at pi over 2, where sine crosses through the x-axis at 0, or pi over 2 units to the left of cosine. So like the last identity, if I phase shift the graph of cosine to the left by pi over 2, I should produce the graph of sine. Right? Well, something's not right here. Think about your understanding of trig transformations. You should be able to see that this is a reflected sine graph, or the graph of sine has been reflected over the x-axis. We can reflect that in the equation of our function by placing a negative in front of our function. Another identity debunked. Woo! So let's switch things up a bit. To prove these two identities, I'm going to take a look at a very special triangle. No, not those special triangles, just a triangle that happens to be kind of special. In this triangle, I have a 90 degree angle, or pi over 2. I have some angle, and I have a third angle, which I know to be pi over 2 minus the other angle, based on the fact that these three angles must add up to 180 degrees, or pi radians. Now, if I look at this angle x, and I look at the sine of this angle, I know the sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, or a over c. Now, if I take a look at the angle at the top, pi over 2 minus x, and I look at the cosine of that angle, we know that to be the adjacent, or A, over the hypotenuse, also known as C. So from this short little proof, we can conclude that the sine of this angle must be equal to the cosine of this angle. We can take a similar approach to prove this identity. Looking at angle X and looking at the cosine of that angle, we know that to be the adjacent, or B, divided by the hypotenuse, C, also known as B over C. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the top angle, but this time I'm going to look at the sine. I know the sine to be opposite over hypotenuse. No surprise there, that's b over c. So we've proven both of these identities. Hey, we got a whole row! Is this where I show bingo? So the next row. We'll do this one quickly, because each of these really just requires to use our understanding of reciprocal trig identities. Remember these? The reciprocal trig identities can be used to show that sine, cos, and tan can be written underneath a 1 and called cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So if I take the sine x in this first identity and put it underneath a 1, I'd get cosecant of x. If I do the same thing to the right side, I'd have 1 over cos of this stuff, also known as the secant of this stuff. It turns out the same is true for each of the identities in this row, so we can really use this top row to produce the second row with an understanding of the reciprocal identities. Okay, so that's kind of cheating, but it should be straightforward enough that I don't need to go through each one. This last row can be produced using a similar process, but instead of the reciprocal trig identities, we're going to use what's called the quotient identity, or that tan is the ratio of sine over cos. So if tan is the ratio of sine over cos, and I know from the first two identities that sine of x is equal to this guy, and cos of x is equal to this guy, then I should be able to say sine over cos, or tan, is equal to cotangent of pi over 2 minus x. Remember that cotangent is really just 1 over tan. And since tan is sine over cos, and we have cos over sine, we can say that this should be cotangent. Do you see why I love these things? Now that I think of it, it's probably the same reason I really struggle talking about sports. We can use a similar process to produce the remaining three identities in this row, which I won't do in this video, because at this point I kind of feel like I'm talking to myself. Which, like, I literally am, because I am in a room by myself. Talking. Thanks.